In this video, we're going to set up the tools for C++ programming. Okay, so let's take a look at the tools we'll need to set up our programming environment. Uh, this is going to be explained from the standpoint of a Windows system, but if you're using Mac OS X or Linux, Unix, you can just ignore a few of these steps. So the first thing we'll do is download Eclipse, which is a freely available integrated development environment. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a C or C++ compiler built into it, so that's the reason why we'll need to download MinGW. It's also freely available. Then we'll look at installing Eclipse, installing MinGW. Then we'll need to alter our, our path environment variable in Windows in order to get some path information there to the MinGW toolset. And then finally, we'll need to verify our installation by running a simple program. Okay, so we have some links here to both Eclipse and MinGW. If you're going to be installing Eclipse on a Windows system, I'd recommend getting the 32-bit version. There's been some known bugs with the 64-bit version. Those may be resolved by the time that you watch this video, but my recommendation would just be to download the 32-bit version. Uh, if you're going to be running on Mac OS X or a Linux Unix system, you can ignore downloading the MinGW. Okay, let's take a look at installing Eclipse. So I've already downloaded the zip file to my downloads directory. So I'm going to go here to Windows Explorer and then to Downloads, and here's the zip file that has Eclipse. So I'm going to do double click on it, and then select Eclipse, and then click on Extract All Files. And I'm going to just change the path here so that it goes directly into the, the C directory. And click on Extract. So it may take a little while to extract the files. It's about 120 megabytes in size. Okay, so Eclipse is finished installing, and we can verify that our installation was okay by going to the Eclipse directory and then clicking on Eclipse executable here. And if you get a pop-up here for security warning, you can remove the checkbox if you like. Go ahead and click on Run. All right, so whenever you launch Eclipse, it's going to ask you to select a workspace. So this is going to be where you store your various projects and programs uh, whenever you start development. Uh, you can choose the default, or you can change it up if you like. I'm going to change mine to uh, C++. Uh, so I'll have a different directory there for my C++ work. And go ahead and click on OK. All right, so it looks like our installation of Eclipse was okay. We'll come back and further verify this. Now let's look at installing MinGW. I already have the installation file saved to my downloads directory. So let's go to Windows Explorer, then Downloads, and here we have the MinGW executable. So go ahead and double click on it, click on Run, click Next, click Next again. Uh, in this case, we'll use the prepackaged repository catalogs. So click on Next. Read through the license agreement. If you accept the terms, go ahead and click on Accept the Agreement. Click Next. Here we'll keep the default installation path, but if you prefer to change that, you can. Click Next. Uh, we'll keep the default here as well, so click Next. Here we'll make sure we click on the C++ compiler. That's the main thing that we're looking for here. We'll also want to select the MSYS basic system. We need that as well. Click Next, and then finally click Install. So this may take a little bit of time to install, uh, but once we have it, we'll come back and look at uh, configuring our environment. Okay, now that we have Eclipse and MinGW installed, we'll need to add a couple of things to our environment path. This is needed so we can gain access to the C++ compiler, the C++ standard library, and some of the other tools we install with MinGW. So let's go over here to the Start button, left-click on it, then go up to Computer, right-click on that, and then go and left-click on Properties. Now you want to select Advanced System Settings, and then click on Environment Variables. So here under System Variables, we'll scroll down, and come to Path, and then Edit the Path by clicking on Edit. And then we'll go to the very beginning of the path and type in C colon slash MinGW slash bin. That's the first thing that we need to add to the path. Then semicolon, 
And then we need to type in C colon slash mengw again, then slash msys slash 1.0 slash bin semicolon. Okay, again, these things are needed to be added into the path so we can access those tools from mengw. Go ahead and click on OK, click on OK again, click on OK, and you can close out of this, and you're done. Okay, the last thing that we'll want to do is create a shortcut on our taskbar to be able to access Eclipse, and then also we'll want to verify that Eclipse can compile and run a program. So let's go over here to Windows Explorer, go to our C drive, go to Eclipse, and then we'll select Eclipse.exe, right-click on it, and then select Pin to Taskbar. So now we should have a little icon down here for Eclipse. We can left-click on it to launch Eclipse. We'll use our workspace that we set up before. Click on OK. And now once we're inside of Eclipse, we'll go here to File, then select New, and then we'll select C++ Project. Once here, we'll type in a name for a new project, Test, and come here and select Hello World C++ Project, and the tool chain should be MinGW GCC, so make sure those are selected. Go ahead and click on Finish, and once you've done that, you should be able to come up here and click on the uh, Compile button, which will be, look like a hammer and verify that you don't get any sort of errors. So if we look down here, we have no errors. And now we'll come here and click on the Run button. So the Run button is this green button with the white triangle. Left click on it. And if we look down here at our Console tab, we should have Hello World. And that verifies that everything is working correctly in terms of our Eclipse installation, that we're able to access and make use of the MinGW GCC compiler, uh, and everything seems to be working well.